In this video, I want to talk about um, using spirograph and making more of a fine art um, piece with spirograph on canvas. Now, um, at the beginning here, I, I'm doing this myself for the first time today. So we're walking through the steps from the beginning. And what you see here, on, I have a temporary work table set up. And this is a canvas that is um, 6 by 12. And I have um, acrylic stripes on the background because I was working in these three colors. And I don't really like looking at the stripes. So what I'm doing is adding a white block in the middle of it. And I'm going to put spirograph drawings on there. I also have a 6 by 18 canvas that right now looks like it's a vertical canvas and I'm coating that with white acrylic paint because I'm going to do the same thing with that and put spirograph on them. And the third thing you see over here, these are 4 inch by 4 inch canvas panels and it's basically canvas mounted on cardboard. I get these at Blick. Now these are probably going to be the easiest way to, to do a spirograph on canvas. They're very inexpensive. This is a box of 24 from Blick, $3.46 plus shipping. You can't get any cheaper than that. So 24 to a box and they come white uncoated these are some I had before that I had green on. So I'm recoating them in white because I want to do this fire graphs with white backgrounds. Now they come in different sizes. Uh, the 4x4 I find are, are very convenient. These are some 5x7s. Um, so those might be the easiest surfaces to do um, spirograph on, but you would need a spirograph set one of the newer sets that uses, um, they call it spiral putty, but it's really a poster putty. And that's what holds the outer wheel to the surface. You, if you have a vintage spirograph set, you'll have a problem because that is held in place with pins and you can't really put pins through these. So um, the travel spirograph uses sticky notes. It doesn't have either pins or spiral putty. So the least expensive spirograph um, that you would need is the Design Tin Set, which is about $13.99, and I'll show you that in a minute. So here is the first step. Is um, As I said, these are so cheap, and they actually suit a spirograph design with being 4x4. Four four. So um, the first step is to... Um, Liquitex Basics Acrylic Paint. In my other um, Spirograph videos, I've talked about using a set of primary colors. So if you have that, you can use the white from that set. If not, a tube of white Liquitex Acrylics Basics is very inexpensive. And I could leave it blank. The uh, canvases, including the boards, come with a uh, acrylic gesso on there. So you don't have to add the white paint, but I plan on sealing these at the end in acrylics. So for me as an artist, I would automatically put an acrylic background on there. You don't have to. So you could just buy the 4x4 canvas panels and use the white acrylic gesso background that's already on there to go ahead and do your spirograph. But this is what I'm doing and um, in a moment I'm going to set the camera up and just show you the best way to get an even white background with acrylic paint. Okay, and here you see one of those canvas panels, and actually I, I've been doing some woodworking and gluing here, so I have some sawdust in the way. 
Um, you want to make sure that the surface just is clean. That was a piece of wood that just fell over. You want to make sure the surface is clean. And I, this is a, um, a can from a ham thing. And I've mixed the paint in here. And I add water. And I also add a little bit of acrylic medium. But if you don't have that, it's not a problem. And this is the consistency you want to paint. Not really thick, but not at all watery. So that's kind of how you want the paint. Now when you're doing a background of any kind and you want a flat appearance, you need to um, use different brush strokes. So what I do is I go in one direction. And let me just show you how that's covering. See that covers very well. And then I go in another direction. And as I said, I've got um, a few pieces of sawdust getting into this, which I'll remove um, before the paint dries. Acrylic dries fairly quickly, and that's why I recommend it for this instead of oil. You can use oil paint, but it'll take much longer for the, this background to dry. So there, I've gone in three directions. And I'm using what is called a wash brush, which is a watercolor brush. Generally, watercolor, acrylics, glue, but it's called a wash brush. And if I, I thought I had gotten all the sawdust out of here, but looks like I missed some. And the newspaper is good to work on because when you do get something on your brush, you can just brush onto the newspaper to get it off your brush. And you don't want to go over it too many times because you'll end up picking the paint back up off the surface instead of laying it down. So just like that, go over it a few times in a few directions. Now this is the second coat I've put on there, but that's because the other surface was green. And here's the one I did a few minutes ago. And you can see that there are areas that are not covered. So that's why I'll probably put three coats of white and let them dry for about a half an hour in between each coat. But using a temporary um, work area like this, I've actually just got a board set up on a box and newspaper on the board and using um, this kind of a setup I could open one of the boxes of canvas boards that arrived and I could do all 24 at once and usually that is what I do, a box at once so that I have 24 prepared canvases now, if you're an artist, you can use them for anything with a white acrylic background. You could use them for oil pastels or oils or, or anything. It's just an extra layer. And I'm just being a little bit picky about getting the sawdust out. Usually it's brush hair and you get one in there and, and you can't get it out of there. But anyway, so three coats. Um, going all different directions with the brush strokes. Now, when this dries, what I'm going to do is take one of the Spirograph outer wheels and stick it right on here with the Spiro putty and using ballpoint ink and ballpoint pens, I am going to just do a Spirograph design. And what I think is going to be um, interesting. I'm a, I've been a pen and ink artist for many years, so I, I know all about drawing inks and technical inks and all of that. Ballpoint pen is almost as permanent as some of uh, the fountain pen or drawing inks. So what I will then do is let that spirograph design dry for at least a month. Um, I really want it... Uh, 
there is it depends I think the ones I'm going to be using today are gel based but any of them are going to um, dry out and become a little bit more permanent on the surface and then about a month from now I will have an it's called a fixative spray f-i-x-a-t-i-v-e and you can get um, or acrylic clear spray I'm gonna try um, I have an oil pastel fixative which goes on a little bit different you don't want to use varnish because varnish will turn yellow and I think you want to spray instead of a brush because the only thing I can think of is that if I go I have acrylic medium that you can use as a final coat and I'm afraid that even after a month if I brush it on the pen might smudge so the steps are to prepare canvas boards if you want a, a painted background you could use any other color that you wanted and uh, you would need the design tin size spirograph and or any any spirograph set that has the spiral putty and um, we'll I'm going to be doing the design and then let it dry for a month and then after a month you want to spray it with a fixative or a clear seat, uh, sealer. Now on, before I get to the next step which will be doing the spirographs, I have this on a block of wood because what that does is give um, a solid surface under the canvas. So when I go to put the spirograph wheel here, I want something solid underneath it. Um, if you're using a stretched canvas, you'll have to know um, how wide the opening is on the back before you have, you know, can find a piece of wood to fit. If you don't have wood, the other thing I think that would work on either of these canvas sizes is index card boxes the plastic index card boxes that are a couple of dollars that you keep all your index cards in look for one that has a flat top surface or a flat bottom surface I have two that aren't right here right now but uh, one has a rounded top and that wasn't really a good support under the canvas but there might be other things around the house that you can find um, that would fit inside the canvas. These boards are a little bit too wide. This is more of a three inch gap on the back and the boards are four inch. So, but I have it like that so that when I go ahead and put the wheel on here, I have a hard surface underneath. So you might have to look around the house and see what you have that you can also um, do that with. So the next step will be, um, what I'm going to do is apply, let this dry, apply another coat so that uh, I have one to show you what I'm doing. And we'll do the spirograph after these dry. While I'm waiting for the canvases to dry, I want to show you some fixatives that you would be using about a month after you do <coughs> excuse me the spirograph drawings um, this is what I've been using on oil pastels Dick, Blit, Dick Blick matte fixative workable fast drying now the reason I'm thinking of um, that's basically for oil pastels or a graphite drawing that you want to um, protect from smudging as you work on it um, but the reason I'm thinking of that is oil pastel fixatives are made not really to always be reworkable like that one is but oil pastels themselves never harden and I'm not sure how ballpoint ink ages so by using an oil pastel fixative um, I'm thinking if the ink stays slightly flexible then the oil pastel fixative would be better than just straight acrylic over it. The lines on a spirograph are so thin 
it's probably not going to be um, a big difference either way. But that's the one I use most often for everything is a matte fixative that isn't a permanent sealing. Um, to get a permanent seal, you would just buy Krylon Clear Acrylic Spray. But in the meantime, Blix is the cheapest, I think. Um, there is also this one, which is Reworkable Blue Label Fixative for Drawings. And what this, any of these are going to do, except for the clear acrylic, they're just going to put a coating on the ink and a coating on the canvas, and they're going to protect it from UV light a little bit or um, dust, uh, dirt, smoke, all that stuff. Um, here's another one. So there are several... There's that one, and then what you don't want is Blick Spray Var, because that's a spray varnish. And I've used that on oil paintings, and um, I don't know, I, I'm not real happy about it. Uh, varnish, I think, does better when it's brushed, but um, you don't want to get that anyway. So that's the one you don't want. Now these are different types of oil pastel fixative. This is also a spray by Sennelier. And um, it goes on the same way the others do. Uh, it's non-aerosol. And this one, unless you're an expert at um, art materials, I would avoid it. And this is a blue label fixative too. But this one actually came with um, an atomizer, which is a small mouthpiece tube and you actually suck air into the tube and then blow the the fixative out so that can be dangerous um, unless you do it all the time and you're used to doing it definitely not for children um, that one and this is again either the any of the three of these I don't know if this is Lasco or Laco I don't know how they pronounce that I mean it's French so but this is just a spray fixative blue label fixative or dick blick matte fixative they're all about six or seven dollars a can but if you plan on doing spirograph on canvas or canvas boards or even on paper if you do them on paper and you want to save them you can use a, a fixative on the paper ones speaking of which if you're going to do this on fine art paper, I would recommend um, trying to move my stuff around here. This is Strathmore drawing paper, and it's a very good weight for spirograph. Um, that's a crayon drawing, so it'll take um, crayon. That's many layers of wax. So it will take that. It won't take watercolor, but it's a very nice paper for spirograph. Very smooth, very flat. Um, a it's a good art paper that is, I think this is their 300 series. Oh no, it's 400. 400 series, um, which is their best series in drawing papers. I, I thought they had a 500 series, but... This is their 400 series drawing paper, and I think they're about $5 a pad. I haven't bought um, this particular kind in a while. I started buying paper by the sheet. Um, the other thing I found out while I was scrounging around here, here is one of the index card boxes I was talking about. And I can put the canvas on it, and it sits like that. But I think I found something that might even be better, which is a box of tea bags. It's longer, and depending on the length of the canvas, it's about two and a half inches wide. And now, when I go to do this spirograph, I can just make sure that whatever end I'm working on, which is over here, there's a little bit of a gap at the other end. Um, but I can just move the box. So 
a, a box of tea bags works very well. And that is just going to give me a little bit of support underneath the canvas. It's not going to be a hard surface. Um, and actually somebody had given me bunches of decaf, decaf tea, which I don't drink at all. So if you have smaller boxes, you might be able to fit two under the larger canvas. So that's an idea of how you can find things around the house to just give you um, some added support. The pens, most of the pens I'll be using today are Papermate Ink Joys. And you get two of each. But the, the nice thing about this is that they have orange and they have brown. And I forget how much this was. But Papermate Ink Joys. Um, I have some other ones here. This is another type I found the other day. These are by Bic, and they're ballpoint pens are, that are actually in the same four colors as the vintage Spirograph. And those are called um, Bic Atlantic. And then also Bic makes um, the four color pen which also has the original colors of a spirograph. And then this is the design tin I'll be using today. It's about $13.99 and when we go to do the spirograph I'll open it up and show you what it comes with. And um, I just have to wait for the canvas to dry. One note on all fixatives or all spray varnishes or spray acrylic um, even, well, it wouldn't apply to brushing on acrylic, but they're all flammable, every single one of them, and it's the vapors that are flammable, so you need to work with them. I, I spray things outside. I have spots in my grass where I lay down some newspaper, put the piece on top of the newspaper, and then spray it and go back out when it dries. Sometimes you end up with gnats. Um, or small insects in on your um, drawing so it's you have to check the weather uh, a slight breeze actually helps it keeps the bugs off of them um, but so that's a consideration if you do it outside I also have done it in a in a spare room with all the windows open but um, it, for me it's easier to do it outside and just make sure I get rid of the gnats or the bugs they're all flammable and they're not for children. So any spraying of any fixative on a finished spirograph drawing should be done by an adult and not a child. And then I had said the big pens were Atlantic. It's Atlantis with an S at the end. Um, so those are two notes. It took four coats of white to cover the green on the small canvas boards. I have two coats of white on the large canvas and it took several on the um, one with the striped background simply because that striped background was there. Probably five coats and as I had said a moment ago I'm now just waiting them for them to be dry enough for me to work on. Now here's another set. This is the Spirograph Art Studio set. And this was about $25. And um, the reason I got this for myself was um, for the markers, the colored pencils. Um, they also give you a glue stick and scissors. But let me, let's open this up because as I'm waiting for the um, canvases to dry, I'm thinking that um, markers may do better on the acrylic surface. And doing this with one hand has just a little plastic tab here. This is really a nice set. Um, comes with just about everything that I buy separately. Now there's the Spiro Putty, 
There are your wheels, um, your outer wheels. It does come with a couple of the shapes and one of the racks. These are the markers, um, the book, paper. I think that's all that's in there is the book and paper. I haven't fully opened this yet. Here are three ballpoint pens in red, blue, and green. And here are the colored pencils, a sharpener. I don't know what this is. I couldn't get this open. Maybe it's a stamp. It looks like it might be a stamp. I couldn't get it open when I tried. Scissors, you know, obviously probably meant for kids and they they put a curve on the end and a glue stick. But what I was interested in, like I said, were the markers and how markers will act on the canvas surface. Um, and the reason I say that is because I'm sitting here looking at these canvases and if I don't, if that tea bag box under there isn't strong enough to give me a solid surface for a ballpoint pen, then a marker would be better. Now this one also has yellow, which not all the sets come with. It's got purples, it's got a brown, greens, and let me just show you what the tip looks like. That, to me, it almost looks large for the spirograph holes. But we'll see. As I said, I'm doing all of this for the first time with spirograph on canvas. Um, what I can do, these are still wet, but I can go right in the corner. That actually might work very well. And then we would be um, also letting that dry for at least a month before we put any kind of a final um, fixative or clear acrylic on it. It is, it's a stamp, a rubber, like a rubber stamp. Now, I wonder why they give you that, but you don't have an ink pad. Maybe it moves down. It's pre-inked. Isn't that adorable? If you love Spirograph, it's adorable. Okay, um, this is still a little bit damp, but I think it'll be okay to, to start on. And I'm going to put um, a design in the center. Now I'm going to be using the design tin set, which you can see is much smaller than the um, art set. The design tin set comes with um, one, two, three, four, five, six wheels, the bar, the spiral putty, blue and red pens, and a rack, paper, and the book. And um, these are the shapes that the different wheels make. They give you one outside ring or outside wheel. So I'm going to start with this one. So I need the, the outer ring. And this is number 60 for the wheel. And it has eight points. So here's the outer ring and the 60 wheel. And spiral putty and I am now going to attach it to the canvas. Now on this one, um, I'm going to start first. I have the block of wood under this and not the tea bags. And I want to try ballpoint first. So I've got orange, green, and black, which is as close as I can get in ballpoint to the colors of the background. I also borrowed out of the art set um, three markers, orange, green, and yellow, in case the ballpoint doesn't do well on this canvas. So let me set up the camera and we'll see how it does with ballpoint on canvas. Okay, now I have put four equal pieces of spiral putty underneath the ring. I have the one number one hole lined up with about the center up here at the top. And just to make sure this is going to work well, because the, the uh, canvas paint, I mean the acrylic paint, is still a little bit tacky, I just have a white pencil 
and I want to see how smoothly so it looks like it's going to work um, like I said the paint is a little bit tacky which maybe I should have let it dry longer um, this particular one took a lot of um, paint so let's start with the draw um, with the orange and I'm doing that um, eight loop shape and this is where it was tacky was just getting started Now I've gone over it a couple of times and there is just a little bit of smudging from the ink so that we might have to expect. Now I'm going to use the same ring and just use a different hole. Now again, I have the wood under here, which is giving it a fairly hard surface underneath. A little bit of smudging again. And then um, I know that if I add the black, it's going to make it, um, the whole design, a little bit dark. Those two pens are ink joys. This one's a Bic in black. And I just, um, you want to get all the, the gunky stuff off the tip of your pen. The Bics tend to do that a little more than the others. And just kind of give it a little bit of a help here at the beginning. I think any resistance I'm getting here is because the paint was wet. Now on this, it, it's almost ruining the design because there's a lot more black smudging and that could be specifically from the ink type. So the ink joy went on there much better um, than the black. Now a trick that I sometimes use, um, if I can find it, is I use scotch tape to lift off of paper the ink surfaces, but I don't know if I'll be able to lift that much black off. So what I could do is also come back in with a small brush and the white acrylic paint and take out um, this smudging that's on the outside. But the black part came out too dark. So now, um, of course, what I can do is just paint over the whole thing and start again. But let's see if I can save it without doing that. This is a marker. This is the marker from the art set. And again, the wheel is just a little bit sticky. And now what that did was blend in with the orange, so I've got kind of a pumpkin color brown going on, and, and the green and the outer ring. It's not that bad. Um, it's not that good. But it could be worse. And like I said, with the white acrylic paint, I can just cover the whole thing and do it again. But this is what I wanted to find out was how the different um, pens or markers act. So right now, out of the ball points, I'd go with the Ink Joy instead of the Bic. And I'm trying to see where I started this one from. Oh, let's try here. And now I'm actually going over the green ball point with green marker kind of balance out the darkness that the black gave it. So 
So I could go back into this with the white paint and just clean up around it and it wouldn't be that bad. You see how the black, um, I'm sorry, the, the black faded out in areas. And the pen itself works fine. But there is smudging and I could go back in with white paint on the in between here, like here, here, up here, and just clean it up a little bit and then leave it. I mean, overall I did not want to look at the stripes. And now that I know how these are going to act a little bit, I could use ink joys and do one on either side of this. So, but that was with the wood underneath. So let's try it on the larger canvas. Okay, and I do have um, it set up the same way with the outer ring on more or less the center of the canvas. This time I've got the tea bags under there. And this time I'm going to use um, the Ink Joy pens again. Here's a blue one. I'm still using the same number 60 wheel and I've got the one hole pointing up and more or less in the center here. Now I get smudging like that on paper as well. So the smudging doesn't surprise me. Now this, and this paint is a little bit drier, and that comes out wonderfully. It really comes out wonderfully. Um, that's blue, and here's a red. There is a little bit of smudging, and that's with the tea bags underneath again. That works almost like it's paper. <clears throat> Excuse me, almost like it's paper. Now again, these are very simple designs and there is a little bit of smudging there, but I could bring that ring back again and add to that design if I wanted to. But that's blue and red on the white canvas and it went down very smoothly. Now here we are with the canvas panel and I've got the ring on there. The spiro putty has both stuck to and lifted off of all three surfaces without a problem. So again I've got the one hole at the top. I'm using the number 60 ring. And this is what I thought would happen. Um, the canvas panel is th the least smudging and the smoothest ink application. Let's... This is also more dry than that first canvas. Now the orange isn't very dark anyway. when that happened. Um, the lighter colors are going to be like that. But again, now that left a mark outside the design and I can just come back with the white paint and cover that over. So there's orange and green. Um, let's add some green marker and see how the marker does. I'm just doing a random kind of a um, freestyle design here and there is a difference between the marker and the pen 
but let's go ahead and use the orange as a marker and again now I'm getting brown and smudging it must have picked up the black from the other one but still not a, not a bad not a bad design um, I'm winging it. I'm not doing one of their designs by the directions. Not bad at all, really. And that's on the canvas panel and very little smudging. And you can see how easily that lifts off. So now I can let that dry. It's got both marker and pen on it, the Inkjoy pens. And come back in a month and spray it and I have a permanent spirograph design on canvas. That was really my um, point here was to be able to do spirograph on canvas. So this one on the big canvas looks all alone in the middle there. <laughs> Let me pause it for a second. There's a weed whacker here. I was saying that this design looks all alone in the middle of a big canvas. But just imagine if I uh, move this ring around and do small circular designs that are similar all over the place. It would be such an interesting piece. Um, and here's the little one. And that's the one that came out the worst, but that had the, the most layers of paint on it, and the paint was slightly damp. And the colors blended in. But again, I can continue. I can let that dry, clean up the white a little bit, and I can continue putting more of them around it. I think that'll be a very interesting way to do um, artwork. It brings Spirograph to another level. Um, done on paper, framed, they're just as pretty. But I'm thinking, you know, I, I often have canvas around. I like to work on canvas. If any of these are finished and then sprayed and they're permanent works, I think they'd look great hanging on the wall. So this has been Spirograph on canvas.